Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, this is my long-term review of my 2017 Trek Remedy 8. So I've been riding this bike for more than two and a half years now, almost three years. I wanna cover some of the things that I have replaced on this bike and to tell you if it's a bike that I continue to recommend. In Trek's lineup, the, the version eight of every level of bike that they have, whether it be the fuel, uh, the Remedy, uh, slash what have you, the 8 is the highest spec aluminum frame bike that they offer. So, so this bike come with a Pike 150 front, Rock Shocks Deluxe in the rear, also 150. My fork is now 160. So going over some of the component specs that I've changed, original brakes were Shimano Dior, and I upgraded them after going to Windrock. I was not necessarily under bike so much as I was definitely under braked. Though the Dior's never faded on me, and though I was able to get down the hill safely, I wanted to be able to brake without working quite so hard. The Dior's, though they worked, like I said, they didn't fade, but I had to work pretty hard at, at Windrock. So that was one of the first things that I wanted to upgrade uh, after coming back there. And so I went with the four piston Shimano's, the XT, uh, which hold the same brake pad as the Saint brakes and the Z brakes. So far I have had zero complaints with those. They're very powerful. They're not mind-blowing more powerful than Dior's were, but I uh, definitely don't have to work so hard in order to get the bike slowed down. And uh, so it's been pretty great. I did stay with a 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. I didn't change those because uh, it seems pretty adequate for everything that I've done so far. I did go to Beach Mountain with uh, the new brakes and, and I was so much in, I had so much more control of the bike. I also changed the crank set to I kept a GX level crank set just like it was on it and I have you've seen maybe you've seen my other video and I'll put a link up there for the crank install where I did the uh, the dub um, bottom bracket press fit uh, into this bike and changed it out for the a GX with 165 millimeter cranks. Uh, I did that because a couple reasons. One I am a little shorter rider and I didn't feel like a shorter crank. I've, I've used them on past bikes uh, without issue so I went with back with a 165 and it has virtually eliminated pedal strikes. Wheel set. I did change out the wheel set on this guy for a set of Spank Uzi Trail 350 rims laced to Project 321 hubs. The only reason I wanted to go with the hubs uh, Project 321 over say a Industry 9 or some other is because you just don't see them around here. That's not something I absolutely had to have on this bike. That is more of something I just wanted. I upgraded my old KS that originally come with the bike. The stock one was 125 millimeters of travel. This one is 150, which was a little hard to find until one up made theirs because the insertion point on the this model of Remedy um, it has a high pivot point engagement and it prevents the dropper post or any seat post from going down all that far. This one has such a small insertion point that I was able to get a 150 and I can still actually drop it farther into the frame. It's that made, it's one of those things that this, you didn't realize that extra inch of drop on the drop, how much difference it really made. I am so thrilled with it. So out of all the upgrades on this bike, there are three. My favorite is probably the brakes. I really enjoy how much better they modulate, but I really enjoy how when I'm riding a downhill or or anything really, really rough that I've got so much more control, I feel like, of the bike and my speed and, and, and how I want to do it, and it's just, it's, just, it's just that much better. The close second behind that would probably be the dropper post. Three. Uh, the third thing is the crank set. The 165 millimeter crank set is, it, it, it's really good for these low bikes to me. Um, you might notice it, you might not like it if they're that being that short, you might try 170, but anyway, the bottom line is it fixed my pedal strikes and that's what I wanted and, uh, and it didn't affect anything else. Getting to the end point of whether or not I would recommend a Trek Remedy uh, to anybody is a definite yes but always dependent upon a few things. If you like to be, um, if you like to lean a little more towards the gravity side of things, if you prefer to jump and you're wanting to jump a little bigger stuff, 
um, if you want a bike that you can get away with on downhills, have enough travel for downhills without buying uh, a real long travel bike that's not as friendly to maybe your local trails, Remedy is a good bike to buy. That, that is a good bike for you. The Trek Remedy is a playful bike. It jumps well. Uh, it, it, it rides well. It climbs well enough. It descends really well. As far as the differences on the newer Remedies compared to this one, which is almost three years old now, uh, geometry-wise, there's not a lot of change. I do believe, from what I can see, that the new ones may be a little bit longer, uh, which will probably make it a little bit more stable, maybe descend a little bit better. Um, the angles are pretty much the same, uh, so I would assume that his climbing is still going to be, you know, uh, fine. Not a speed demon up a hill, and you're not going to beat any, you know, as the term is always said, you're not going to win any cross country races on it. And, and why would you have this bike if you want to race cross country? Geometry wise, not a lot of difference. Uh, the new shock design, where it's a straight through shock and it's not a full floating shock anymore, uh, I haven't tried that yet. But uh, if they've improved upon what they've already had, then they've, they've done something because this is a great platform for me. I can't do anything but rave about it. It's fine. It, it, the suspension works flawlessly. I can't remember a single harsh bottom out on this shock. Uh, if it's bottomed out, it's not been that I've noticed it that hard. The platform, even when I run it fully open, is still very good. For months and months, I rode, I rode the bike with the shock uh, fully open on pretty much every trail. And only recently have I started switching to the, the firmer setting more often. Um, that is mainly because due to the, the type of riding, how my riding style is changing, how I'm developing my jumping ability, the stiffer setting on the rear shock seems to aid that a lot better um, for my riding style. But however, you get me on a downhill trail, open it up, and it's just it just floats. Uh, the faster you go, the better it feels. Uh, so anyway, if they've improved upon that and they seem to have, I would say the Remedy now is a great bike. But if you're buying used, all the way back to even a 2015, 2016 Remedy, you're going to get a great bike. Uh, I do recommend it. It is it has been such a good bike for me that I will likely be looking very hard in the next couple of years at another Remedy. Uh, and not because I'm a brand specific kind of guy. I really am not brand loyal uh, necessarily. I mean, if a brand has been real good to me, it's hard to look at another bike. I hope this has helped you, uh, whether you're looking at used, whether you're just considering a new Remedy. This should help you if you're looking at a Remedy yourself. So remember, get out and thrash it every chance you get. Go live life big. Click like, click subscribe. See you guys.